So, Deputy President Gashagwa was yesterday in Nairobi in the in the CBD, you know, driving around from the OTC to the Marikiti to the Muturwa market and so on. And basically was preaching against the governor and, uh, you know, trying to spread a lot of fear of, uh, you know, the the numerical strength of the Kikuyu community in the in the city. You know, I expect, uh, just as the way he has confessed himself to be a, a villager, I don't expect anything different from Gashagwa. But it surprises me a lot that Kenya has a myriad of problems. But what the deputy president in the country can wake up to is to go and preach and say that he is being targeted, you know, as an individual. And he's being targeted because he's a Kikuyu. And for him not to be targeted, despite not giving any benefit to the individual Kikuyus in the city or elsewhere, uh, he wants to be protected and to be called the, the real kingpin of the, of the mountain. King Murima. So I, I find it very absurd that in this day and age, Kajagwa can still find it very convenient to come and preach against the president. You know, the president is facing a lot of issues, and one of the, the main challenges now is that some people who are in the uh, in the in the in the in the, in the kitchen cabinet of Gashagwa and Uhuru feel entitled to the presidency. The problems of Ruto stem from the fact that some people are so entitled to the presidency that they feel that not any other person should be president but themselves, you know, or from their own families or their communities. It happened during the Moi times. You, you saw when, you know, a, a good number of the individuals who were very close to the Kenyatta ganged up and wanted to, to, to ensure that Moi didn't last long in the seat and somebody else from the community came and took up the seats. And Moi, uh, when he was in, in the presidency for 24 years, the Kikuyu working class was weaponized against uh, the presidency of uh, Daniel Arap Moi. Uh, Moi was not a good person, he was, he did, and, but he was not a perfect person. A lot of things he did well, you know, education and so on. Uh, but one thing which was evident in his presidency is that you know the Kikuyu community was weaponized against him and, and the civil society was very conveniently used that which is also still very much dominated by the people from the individuals from the, the Kikuyu community. So when we were campaigning for Raila to be president I think we saw the same when individuals who were very close to then President Uru Kenyatta also saw an opportunity of uh, having somebody from the, the, the mountain as the running mate, uh, despite uh, Mata Karua not showing any ability to deliver or even believe in the visions of, uh, of, of Raila Molodinga, or even deliver any seat, you know, uh, or deliver any vote to, 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 to Raila. Remember that Mata Karua, even in her own polling stream, live alone the polling station, she could not deliver the polling stream. Uh, polling stream is just 700 people. I wonder why she could not even put up much effort to convince people who vote with her in the same stream to vote for Raila Molodinga. So I believe that if Raila became president, if Raila became president uh, just as we wished, I believe that uh, he would be dead now. I believe that uh, he would have been poisoned. I believe that Mata Karwa would be president now. I think that the schemes against uh, President uh, Ruto uh, is not because he is the worst president we have seen. Ruto is not the worst president. Uh, people are trying to portray him so, and I, I, I wonder why his political supporters are not coming out to, to state this clearly. You saw President uh, Moi, you know, when he became president, within two, three years, he was very unpopular. In fact, people really supported the coup against him. It was very unpopular because of the first, because of the propaganda from the uh, the, uh, the influential Kikuyu uh, leaders, and also the, then the working class were, were weaponized to, to 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 fight his regime. When Kibaki became president, and because of the National Rainbow Coalition um, agreement, you know, it became so unpopular within two years that he lost a referendum in 2005. 
he lost a referendum in 2005, and eventually lost the election of 2007. And he had to kill thousands to stay in power. He had to kill so many people. And then you never had Kabando, Kabando making noise about the misrules, you know, the, the, the authoritarianism, the kidnappings, the murders. When, even when Mbai died, Mbai was murdered. Uh, you never had uh, Kabando Akabando or, or, or Paul Mwite. You never had Matakarua say that, oh, Kibaki Amenza Kuwa what? <laughs> it is very convenient now to, to place it on, on Ruta. Uh, when Uhuru became president, by the end of 2005, 2015, he was very unpopular. He was very unpopular. In fact, when people got to 2017, remember he lost the election. And the Supreme Court was very clear that could be Nashida. And the, the person who helped him, you know, stay in power and, and, and recover his presidency when, when he was spending all his time drinking a lot of alcohol in status, I think is, uh, is, 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 is William Ruto. And uh, eventually he became president again and he had to look for Baba. He looked for Baba despite Baba not... Baba decided to stay back, but he looked for Baba, sat down, he convinced him. I think it's the, the biggest conversation he had. I don't know what he promised him, but he, he saw a chance to get back to the presidency in 2022 through the back door and by having his chosen person. Who was not Baba? Baba was not Uru's. Baba was his, his tool to get the presidency, but Baba was not Uru's uh, preferred president. So, so, so sometimes we get it wrong that... We think uh, Baba is the, is the person who would, would love to be president. Uru saw Baba as the quickest opportunity to become president, uh, to, 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 to get the presidency back to the Kikuyu community again. And so, he, he, despite not even doing anything meaningful, despite not being disciplined enough to, to use the state resources to, to support Baba, uh, he eventually, you know, in 20, from 2018 to 2022, Baba showed him how to make an impactful leadership. And, and, and eventually, you know, the, the expressway, rehabilitating the Kisumu Nairobi railway line, you know, the, the few projects, the Kenol Muranga, you know, road, uh, and so on. You can trace them back to Raila Molo Odinga, who made... You know, you get got caught down to business and ensure that the president was going to leave an impact, despite not giving Baba even a single position in his government. And despite knowing very well that he was not campaigning for Baba to be president, but for, for at least to, to entrench the, 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 the domination by the Kikuyu community. So I find it very absurd that somebody can wake up and say that he, Ruto is the worst president, you know, Ruto did this and that. Do, Ruto has not killed even one-tenth of the number of people who Kenyatta and Kibaki killed, or, or any individual president of them. At some point, there was a time Uru, I think, killed enough Muslim clerics in this country to even warrant an outcry. At some point, you know, there was, there was a reason behind those killings, but he killed, he kidnapped. A lot of kidnappings happened, a lot of, you know, extrajudicial killings, the rivers, you know, Yala, uh, you know, all all the rivers, you know, Tana River, the river, were full of bodies. You'd see 10, 12, 15 bodies. I didn't see, I didn't see the Kenya Human Rights Commission. I didn't see all these uh, Amnesty International. I didn't see, I didn't, these people didn't come out. They came out, when they came out, it, it was just for PR. They didn't come out to strongly condemn President Uhuru because they are dominated by people from the the, from the from the community of President Uhuru then. Uh, you know, the killings, Uhuru, when he became president, they were dealing with the issues of the Hague. And a good number of people were hunted, killed, some of them shot, some of them, you know, killed by, 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 by strangulation, and so on. So when people claim that Ruto is the worst, the worst president, I think we are missing the point here. The point is, let President Ruto you know, for the stability of the country, he might not be the, my preferred candidate, but for the stability of the country, you need to realize that we need at least sometimes to be loyal to the flag. We need not to be loyal to the, to the ethnic uh, ideologies. We need to be loyal to the flag. And the flag uh, sometimes is very important that uh, we keep 
uh, focus on the law. So the law says that he, he has the mandate up to 2027. Why don't we let it be so? Why don't we give him time? Why don't we ensure that you know, he implements his policy, you know, keeping him in check, ensuring that they implement them legally is okay. But when Kabando Kabando and all these uh, uh, ethnic chauvinists wake up every day, when, 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 when Gashagwa wakes up and tells you that, you know, now he's being targeted, when Gakuya, just because he wants to be governor, despite showing that he ha doesn't have any competency to become a, a serious governor, is telling you that, Onajua, Sasa, what wa Morima, Razima, wa Chukuri, serious. You know, let's get serious. And Nairobi cannot remain behind that Wakulima market, the way it is filthy. The way food is being mishandled in that place, the way if you get into Kolima market today, you will not eat the food which comes from that place. There has to be order. We have built very good markets, but why is everybody turning the roadside to be the biggest market? Why is every street, just because you know you can mobilize your ethnic communities to come and demonstrate against the governor or somebody or the, the political leaders in town, does not mean that we need to have disorder. Why should we have disorder? Nairobi needs to be smart, Nairobi needs to be organized. The traders need uniform, the traders, every trader who is selling food stuff in this city needs to be registered we need to trace the food we are eating consuming can we trace it from farm to fork can we ensure that we back, we color code all the traders the people dealing with meat the people dealing with vegetables and so on we ensure that uh, you know when, when we see somebody in green we know and they have a name and a number name on this one side and a number on the other side how is it that we allow in this city that somebody comes from burundi today and becomes a hawk and start hawking on uru highway how is somebody comes and hawking food to our builders around town. What if they decide to poison? This, some of these kids who are hawking food in this city are child soldiers. You know, former child soldiers in their, in their own in Burundi and, and, and DRC, where they majorly come from. How is it that all the brothels now in, in, in Kilimani and, uh, and, and so on are dominated by people from, uh, from, uh, from Rwanda, hunting Rwandese who are, who are criticizing Kagame and, and, uh, and strangling them? You know, why do we allow that? Why do we allow this kind of chaos in the city? Why don't we have a city of order and dignity? A city of order and dignity must and should be possible. In this country now, we have a, a working population of uh, 18 million. Out of those 18 million, only 3 million are in formal employment. 15.6 million are in the informal employment. Why don't we get these people to a platform where we can trace them, we can know who is a mechanic, who is a carpenter, who is a welder, who is a saloonist, who is a vegetable food vendor, who is, you know, who is, who is, who is, who is, who is, who is doing electrical works and, and so on, who is a mason, who is a plumber. Can we know all of them? Can we register them in a platform where we can trace them? You know where we can uh, the counties can can can, can uh, be able to empower them we can also give them access to financial services through the commercial banks and, and micro small uh, you know enterprises uh, facilities you know why why don't we support them through insurance services and so on you know trainings uh, empowerments and so on we cannot have a city where people come and claim their ethnic uh, domination we cannot have a city where the most the second most powerful person in the country is parroting how their community needs to be in, in charge of this and that. It, it is very unfortunate. When I see the staff of the county, when I see the ele fellow elected leaders in the county, I don't see their ethnicities. I see, you know, wonderful young men and women who are just willing to serve this country. You know, I've seen staff who, before I got into the city, I, I, I thought that they were not uh, up to the task. But, you know, I've engaged them, I've seen them perform, I've seen them do better. Uh, I've seen business people who are getting disappointed by, by even people from their own ethnic communities. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter whether you are Indian, you know, whether you are Arab or, you know, you are, you are Muslim, you are Christian, you are Hindu, you know, you are Kikuyu, you are Luo, you are Luya and so on. It just matters that you have to be, you know, a dignified human being earning your living in the most, you know, humane way and, and, and in a legal way. So I, 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 I find it absurd that Gashagwa could do that, but uh, this is my, 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 my thoughts that, you know, we need to, to not give ear to what Gashagwa is saying. I think it's being, it's being promoted by NTV and Citizen TV, the two very notorious uh, stations on, on, on this Gashagwa uh, bandwagon. But I think that uh, that kind of mentality 
is, is, is overtaken by, by time. I don't think that Kenya needs that now. So uh, that is my thought on the same. Thank you.